at the point that I wore this, I have never seen myself. It's such elevation. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my god. Hi, Mega Drag. Here's your majesty. Call me Miss Evil Queen. And this is my life in drag. So look number one is, oh my goodness, this look is inspired by Queen of Heart, an amateur drag competition in Singapore where I first started. And we were tasked to create a look from scratch that's made out of the materials that they use for um, to disseminate information about HIV. So my look is made of condoms, unused. <laughs> I swear it's unused. Everything from head to toe, was really from scratch. I started to do everything myself. Like from the accessories, to the headpiece, to the hair. And I used to enjoy that process a lot. That's when I say that art is, a uh, drag is an art. This was the time where I had no expectations about my drag at all. I didn't even see drag as a career back then. I just saw it as an artistic outlet and I miss that. I don't have the time anymore because I'm doing full-time drag. But yes, those were the time where everything was just, I'm just like having the time of my life every time I go and drag. So yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, the second look was the House 628 Virtual Drag Ball. Me, together with Prince, Marina Summers, and Ovi Cunt founded Drag Playhouse. And we will get in drag, join the Zoom, play music, get drunk, and we call it the Virtual Drag Ball. So for this look, this is like really just scratch. It's like a scrap of two-way stretch fab me and fabric that I draped over myself and then created, made a matching glove. What was that white contact lens about? I don't know. These were the times in my life where I would say I totally almost had nothing to offer. But it's also very beautiful in that way that we were still able to continue doing drag, doing what we love, and finding ways to hashtag keep drag alive. My iconic finale look, it's inspired by the Evil Queen. This was designed and made by the Erin Montoya. Erin was my fairy drag mother during Drag Race Philippines. I think this is probably the most expensive outfit I had in my package back then. But I knew even before I got the call that I was casted, yung outfit na yan na yan. And I will, no matter what happens, I'm gonna wear that by hope or by crook. And I was so happy I was able to wear it at the show. At the point that I wore this, I have never seen myself. It's such elevation. Parang this is, kumbaga kung Pokemon ka, this is your final evolution. And I was just so proud. It was jaw-dropping. It was amazing. It's everything I always wanted to wear. And I'm so proud to be able to do that and do it on national television. This is Drag Bingo. Oh my goodness. This look. I'm not even gonna lie, I discovered Shein. It looked great, it didn't look Shein at all. That hair was styled by Johnny Queen and after Drag Race, there's so many drag shows in the market. Like everywhere does viewing parties, does drag brunch. So I decided, uh, you know, let's switch things up. Let's do something different. Drag Bingo is already an existing um, concept in the US. It's a huge thing. I've seen Bob the Drag Queen, Bianca Del Rio, and so many Drag Race alumni and superstars do drag bingo. So we sampled it in a small group of people, just 50 people, and then it started growing. We did drag bingo because it's more interactive, and people came to that, and then it evolved to um, a pop quiz night. So we had these pocket events. It's just a really fun show to do. I think I'm going to do it again sometime. DragCon LA 2023. That's my first ever DragCon. This amazing Sampaguita inspired look was done by Erin Montoya. Sobrang ganda niya sa totoong buhay. Like the pleats, it perfectly hugs my body. The It has a train that's like really long. Gumawa siya ng eksena dun sa pink runway and it's just it's just really majestic and very immaculate to describe it, really. My first ever drag con and my first out of Asia trip for me. And it's amazing because I saw it ganyang drag. That caliber of drag was brought to LA 
at nakita ng maraming tao, even RuPaul or Michelle besides all these queens that I look up to saw me wearing that and it's just amazing. And X Youth in 2023. This is the same look I wore at Drag Race Philippine Season 1. Also, just to clarify, that is a Filipiniana. Like, all the elements of a Filipiniana is there. The camisa, the sobrefalda, everything. That was also done by Erin Montoya. The color is chartreuse. If some of you have already learned how to spell it, then good for you. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I'm the first Filipino drag queen to do a TED Talk. For us to be invited in platforms where people really want to know what's going on to your head. Like, they want to listen to what you have to say, not what you have to perform. And it's very, very rare for us to be invited in platforms like these. So I really, really appreciate that. Na because of the world has opened and opened up so much for Filipino drag queens, we're already invited in platforms that we never even imagined will all will be welcome to. So yeah. <laughs> Look number nine, Obi and Eva photo shoot. If there's one thing that we do best with the trauma that we deal with, <laughs> it's you you capitalize on it, you create a content about it, and you get all the likes. <laughs> Yo, um, this was a custom look by John Garcia. This was styled by Ryuji. Obi and I, we go way back, and we've never had a photo shoot. But we have one common experience and that is that incident. I think this is really beautiful because when something so hurtful and traumatizing happens to you, not everyone has the strength to, you know, do something about it and take control of the narrative. What we did here was exactly that. That word, we wore it and then we take the power back and this is more than the concept, more than us being so aesthetically beautiful in the photo. It's just really the story behind that. It's like, yes, you take the narrative, you do what you have to do, girl, and slay. But yes. So this look is a few hours ago, and this is my favorite look. I love this because it's also very quintessentially Eva. The silhouette is amazing. The makeup is gorgeous. The hair. These are things that normally when I do drag for myself, I don't go this crazy. I don't I don't really go out of the box. Like you just pretty much see Eva looking the same makeup pretty much. But this is the time that I explored it. And it's also very memorable for me because to be in the fashion feature of the number one fashion magazine in the country and be celebrated like this to be uh, you know so many people has worked bringing this creation into life i think whenever whenever we reach milestones here and there it's it's not that because i am special it's because that it is possible and there will be so many other drag queens queer kids who will also look into those pages and see a drag queen that was actually there so for me this is a milestone not just for me but for the entire community and we've come so far and I'm just really really proud to be able to do that in this lifetime I used to do drag just for myself you know I just wanted to do drag because I think it makes me feel beautiful makes me feel powerful it makes me feel in control of myself it's an artistic expression I do it for fun basically right now as I evil it mean whenever I go to drag I realize that because of the fame that was brought to us by Drag Race Philippines, we kind of earned the celebrity status and there's so many eyes looking at us. There are so many people looking up to us and getting inspiration from what we do. So now every time I, I go out in drag, I go full on because you never really know who's watching. Evil Queen is not just one person. Evil Queen is every other person. I don't know but you know, the things that you can do are not the things that define you. Evil Queen now has more purpose. I do drag for a bigger cost, for a higher cost. And I think it serves not just myself, but for a lot of people in the community. That's it. This is your super bitch, Evil Queen. Be fierce, be fun, and be fabulous. Go, go, go! Bye, Mega Drag!